Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Come unto me. How many of us are Christians? He said, Come unto me, all ye that are what? Weary and heavy laden. What is your reward? I will give you rest. It's a promise. It's not a suggestion. That every time you are weary, every time you are heavy laden, in other words, there are all kinds of situations on your life that require the power of God. He says, Come unto me and I will give you rest. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the ultimate solution to the entire problems of mankind is an encounter with Jesus Christ. Now, I know many of us will think we understand what I'm saying. The ultimate solution. You can patch things here and there. You can counsel. You can advise. But the truth of the matter is that the ultimate solution to man's problem. Notice. I didn't say receiving Jesus. I said an encounter with Jesus. They are not the same. You can receive a thing and reject it. When you have an encounter, it becomes part of you. Inseparable. Are we together? And Jesus is teaching here. Give it to us, please. John 14 and then verse 6. And he said unto them, read on. I am, hold on. This Jesus now, that we need to have an encounter with creates dimensions of himself it is i told us that the dealings of god with men is dimensional are we together now so when you just say encounter jesus i told you that the challenges of men is the absence of jesus in their lives now this jesus breaks himself into three dimensions and he says i am all of this number one is what everybody said the way number two the truth number three the life these three things he says i am the way i am the truth now he's talking to people who are weary he's talking to people who are weak he's talking to people who need miracles he's talking to people who need his hand in their lives and he says i am all of this the way the truth and the life are we together now Jesus, the way, describes him as God's authorized method of achieving anything. Write it down. You did an encounter with Jesus, the way. Jesus, the way, is a revelation of the principles of the kingdom. Jesus says, I am the way. The way that leads you to anything that is worthwhile. Our world is full of confusion. Men and women seeking answers from finances, listen carefully, to peace and Jesus says, I am that way you are looking for. Many things will act and try to be like the way. But he says, I am the way. The way talks of the pathway, the authorized channel. You must have an encounter with Jesus the way. Otherwise, confusion will never end in your life. Are we together now? Jesus the way. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 2. Please help us. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 2. The Bible says, is it 2? 
Oh dear, I can't find it again. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. That's the scripture I'm looking for. It says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way that seemeth right. It looks right. But the Bible says that the end thereof are the ways of death. But Jesus says, I am the way. There's no confusion. Now, let me tell you something. We live in a world that is full of methods. We write books about methods. Ways of parenting. Ways of living in health. Are we together? Ways of success. Ways of lifting. Ways of this and that. And all of those things are beneficial. But when it comes to your life and godliness, Jesus gives you his recommendation. I am the method. I am the authorized approach to all things. That means you have options. But Jesus says there's no guarantee. You know how you buy a product and NAFTA tells you you are buying it at your own expense. Our product has our stamp. The Father is speaking to earth and say every time you find yourself in confusion, Jesus, the way, is your path back to life. Jesus. Many people have encountered Jesus, but they have not encountered the way. Hmm. The way out of foolishness. Wisdom is justified by her children. The way out of failure. The light of God's word. Jesus the way. He's introducing himself tonight. Because there are people gathered tonight and this is what you came for. An encounter with Jesus the way. You are born again. Maybe you even love God. But you have not encountered Jesus the way. Your life is full of guesses, trial and error. Hoping that one of the principles you manipulate will eventually lead to answers. But let me tell you the truth. The Bible says to walk circumspectly. That means that for every outcome we desire in the kingdom, there is an authorized pathway. You are not the first to look for money. There is an authorized pathway to bail people out. You are not the first, way, the, the first person to seek restoration. You are not the first person to seek whatever it is. We live in a world of lamentation. We find out that the word of God is a compendium of possibilities. But there are ways. But there is the way. The Bible is full of men who tried other ways. Some of them achieved what they were looking for with their side effects that was not worth it. But here's what Jesus says. I am the way. Everybody say Jesus the way. Say it again. Jesus the way. Say Jesus my way. Now you will think that after talking nicely like this, many people will pay attention to re-examine their approach to life how many families are leading themselves based on the way you know that culture is a way everybody say culture is a way yes there is a way that culture teaches to do things there is a way that civilization teaches to do things there is a way that exaggerated intellectualism teaches to do things. There is a way that over-dependence on science says to do things. For instance, it is the way of God that teaches that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. That is Jesus, the way, speaking. There is science, the way. There is philosophy, the way. Gather as much as you can loot and destroy people and hope you will make it he says i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing there is the way to growth there are many other ways that attempt to help you grow are we together there is the way to peace for instance the bible says as much as it depends on you live at peace with all men that's god's recommendation you can choose to fight you can choose to quarrel and kill yourself. Do you know that most of the pain in our lives are because we followed other methods, well-intentioned, but the way is wrong. Are we blessed? Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Please, let's look at it. For step by step, you lead me and i will follow you all of my days for step by step you lead me 
And I will follow you all of my days Oh God, you are my God And I will ever praise you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever praise you I'll seek you in the morning. I will seek you in the morning. And I have learned to walk in your ways. For step by step, you will lead me. And I will follow you all of my ways. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord. Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But stubborn Nigerians will say what? But stubborn family people will say what? We will choose our way. Ah! All these young people, they don't know what they are saying. And we choose methods that punish us again and again. Let me tell you something. You see, the word of God is ageless. The word of God is timeless. The principles that God delivers to us are the same principles he rules heaven with. Are we together? It's not borrowed. They are the very principles that heaven is governed by. Jesus the way. An encounter with the methods of God. There is a way that a man must behave to a woman. For there to be peace in a family there is a way a man can choose to behave that there will never be peace correct there is a way a wife must respond to her husband for peace to reign there is a way children must behave to their parents there is a way parents must behave to their children there is a way young people must behave we have ignored jesus the way and guessed our strategy and our formula and is punishing us again and again culture says when your wife attempts to treat you bad beat the living daylight out of her as a sign of your masculinity culture the way it never told you what will happen so you beat your wife and all of a sudden you find out that your heavens are closed because the Bible says the opening of your heavens as a married man depends on the way you treat your wife so your heavens are closed business shuts down and you turn around and they tell you your wife is the witch and you move around and you do not know you have violated the way you may be born again but have you met Jesus the way everybody say Jesus the way one of one of the greatest fears in my life is to not walk in the path i'm walking with only to find out that i was wrong my greatest fear in life is walking in error the bible says be careful what you call light lest it be not darkness could it be that after 50 years of walking in a way you are suddenly realizing you've been walking away from God if you want to get God's results you must use his methods you're not going to use your methods and ask God to produce his results in it God is already speaking to us this is a miracle service many people need miracles for several reasons some miracles are their, their need for it is a product of ignorance I am the way I am the way there is a way to choose friends that will make you a useful person there is a way you choose bad and ungodly friends and they scatter and destroy your life and eat away your dreams nobody likes me nobody wants to become my friend there is a way God's way to behave he that wants friends must first show himself friendly. You can't insult everybody around you, castigate everybody and say, I want friends. Uh -uh. There is a way 
and a state a woman must be to be found as a wife the bible says he that finds a wife it didn't say marrying her is what makes her a wife a wife is not a there is she must be a wife before she is found a wife is not a name to a married woman a wife is a state a compendium of virtue well worked on by the spirit then you are qualified to be found can't live your life anyhow and hope that somebody who has been laboring with god learning the principles of the kingdom filing his destiny left right and center will just jump into your life god is not unjust the same way there is a way a man must behave are we together you can't behave like a thief behave like an armed robber behave irresponsible you don't know where you are going you don't care you don't even know where your friends are going and you just see a nice godly sister in the house of god well taught well trained by god and you stroll around carelessly and hope that you will marry her you are following another way and it's leading you to disaster there is a way a young man behaves that makes him a failure guaranteed no mentorship no learning no building no commitment in the house of god there is a way men serve god that it becomes acceptable if they obey and serve him that's god's way they shall spend their days in prosperity their years in prosperity their days in pleasure the way it's an attempt to show us the principles of the kingdom that are responsible for the outcomes we desire if i hand the mic over at random and i call 10 people and i ask them why are you here someone will say there's fire in my house i came here so that god will resolve the fire the fire is not just prayer there are, there may be spirits roaming around don't worry we're going to take care of them but much more than the spirit because you are also a spirit are we together so you are you are contributing to the they are unholy spirits they are demonic spirits but they are human spirits who have refused to subscribe to the way of god tonight i want you to choose the way of the lord choose the way of the lord you are listening to me inside outside online choose the way of the lord there are people following from different nations it doesn't matter your locality choose the way of the lord the way of the lord has equal value in any nation an armed robber in nigeria will still be arrested in america correct a thief in japan is still a thief a wicked person in sudan is still a wicked person in nigeria the same way spirits and their demonic havoc have equal value in every nation the way of god has equal value you obey his principles in nigeria you prosper you obey his principles in london you prosper could it be that some of the untold pain around our lives are products of ignorance lack of an encounter of jesus the way can you pray in one minute and say lord i am ready for an encounter with jesus the way i've made foolish decisions my life is a compendium of confusion one tragedy to the other Are you praying if i followed the way of the lord i wouldn't have sold that land just because i was hungry now my family is in total confusion because of a bad decision i made if i followed jesus the way i wouldn't have beaten my wife if i followed jesus the way i would have trained my children properly pray the lord is giving us direction tonight are you praying because God wants to show us great mercy tonight father show me the way pray what is the way out of the confusion I'm in it doesn't matter how you got there now you are there there is a way out oh there is a way out if you don't look for a door every house has a door finding the door is your escape route you can guess what you think is the door you can guess what society tells you is the door pray please be serious 
How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. No way. How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. And bow to depression. No way. Hey. No way. Because you are my God. That's my testimony. Jesus, the way. You are my God. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah. You are my God. Hallelujah. It says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Listen carefully. The righteous run is a location. You follow a path that leads you there. And it says if you get there, you are saved. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. It is my passion to pray for people. I'm going to pray. And it's not just about the... There are some of you who are not sick. You just need an... End. Most of the problems here, I tell you. 90, over 80 to 90 percent of the problems here are requirements for an encounter with jesus the way the way the way there is a way to approach life such that you become victorious persistent there is a way to approach life that programs you to fail perpetually there is a way you approach life regardless of the obstacles that come you must be on top is a way which way do you not know what principle i've taught us here it has become an anthem i will burn it until it enters our spirit for every outcome you desire there is a mystery that is allocated for the production of that result people don't just become anointed man of god listen anointing does not just come because you are tired of not being anointed no favor does not just come because you think you're a nigerian everybody who favors you has relatives who he can bless what makes you think that he will leave them and come to you there is a system in the kingdom that realities are allocated the mysteries listen please hear me your ministry will not just grow because you think you are anointed there is a system many people shadow box and guess their lives every time we are challenged we try to apply everything we know okay let's try the blood of jesus it didn't work let's try anointing oil it didn't work let's try this it didn't let's try agreement there is no mystery in the kingdom that is idle except you do not know that that it has been taught in a certain way does that not mean that's the result allocated to it you don't give your life by praying to the holy spirit the Holy Spirit is the one who answers, but the system of salvation is resident in the office of the Christ. You don't, you don't pray to the Holy Spirit, although it is the Holy Spirit who comes. The system of salvation, there is no other name. The name that, that um, works out the, the salvation of men is Jesus the Christ. Are we together? You don't come to a meeting and pray and hand over the meeting to angels. Why? Although they are the ministering spirits. But the, the angels of God function as commanded by the saints in partnership with the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit does not authorize their operation, they cannot work. So there is a system. Could it be that something we are missing in our life? Could it be that although the Lord declared that this is our year of triumph, and for those of you coming for the first time could it be that the cause of hardship in our lives is because we are ignoring something everybody say jesus the way there are many people here looking at me who have become victims they are good people but they do not understand god's system of friendship and so all their friends are bad people 
are we together and so you find out that your chances of going to prison is 80 percent although you are a good man because the bible says blessed is the man who does not stand in the way of sinners he's not a sinner but for standing in their way you qualify for implication nor sits in the seat of the scornful right it says but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that law he meditated day and night doth he meditate day and night as a result he shall be like a tree watch this that is planted by the riverside all other trees wait for rainy season but this one has found a constant source of supply so it is ever fresh ever fresh How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way, no way. I will not call on your name and end up in shame. No way. situation that brought you here has a way out that you do not know the way does not mean there is no way you know sometimes David Dam said something when he came when I came in he said something that so ministered to me we get used to our challenges we get used to the wilderness that we conclude there is no way out you can wallow in this forest of pain and confusion and conclude that your life has to be like that from begging to begging from pain to pain from beating to beating no as a family you can come together and say no more there's something we are not doing right this way is not age dependent this way is humility dependent you can be 60 years wallowing in the forest of confusion you can be 10 years and find the truth the bible says and ye shall know the truth we're getting there but there is a path there is a path number two jesus the truth give us again please john chapter 14 verse 6 there is jesus the truth he said i am the truth let me tell you what that means i am God's opinion on all matters. I am the most valid information that is worth trusting. I am the truth. I am God's perspective on all matters. Listen carefully. Jesus the truth is a description of God's mindset. It's a description of God's perspective. Not just the way now, but an encounter with God's perspective life has a way that they teach you to operate but it says i am god's perspective i do not lie there are all kinds of lying statistics in our generation are we together and god says come to me i have a report too federal this and that international organization for this and that came up with their own statistics about several things but come to me I am the truth I am the truth are we together yes oh one out of every two marriages must end within five years Jesus said that's their statistics come I am the truth there is an information I supply you every the average age range in Africa is 43 Jesus said I am the truth the truth says in old age you will be fat and flourishing fat and flourishing not using your pension to continue living fat and flourishing there are informations that the bible gives and tells men you will never make it we live in a generation of decadence but let's look at the truth psalm 112 112 first four verses if i were you and i'm a gentleman here i will receive it to a lady receive it for it praise ye the lord Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his truth. What will be the testimony of that man? Verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Regardless of all the armed robbers loitering around society, his own seed, because he has believed an information. He said, who has believed our report? 
it is to that man that the arm of the Lord has been made the arm of the Lord does not just come to those who desire it's those who there is a report you must believe the generation of the upright shall be blessed verse 3 wealth and riches not shall be in his environment in his house and then he says and his righteousness endureth forever verse 4 unto the upright there ariseth light in darkness do you know what that means deliverance deliverance a man who stands for truth a man who understands the way of god somebody must arise to bail you out when things go wrong let me tell you do you know rescue is an anointing there is a grace that can come upon you and cause men to arise david was in the cave of adulam they were looking for him saul was looking for him and the bible says certain men came they entered a covenant with themselves and say you must be king not everybody's interested in helping you you can sit down loitering around begging give me a job and somebody has eight options eight options and he looks at you and says it's all right just go but when you understand this when that truth becomes your shield and buckler it does something it compels men to react to you in a certain way everyone say jesus the truth there are many of us here seated now with lies in our bodies satan has used objects in our bodies to lie to us there are medical reports that we are seated here with right now hiv cancer a killer disease somewhere there are ladies holding reports you will you don't even have a womb in the first place there's no possibility of a child there are men holding reports there's someone oh there's a report you are going to die soon you will not reach december but the bible says whose report will you believe the doctors are doing their best we have doctors here but it's their educated opinion jesus said i am the truth you go to school they teach you to believe certain things but when you come to the word he teaches you i am one minister of the gospel who believes in god when i read my bible i believe and i if i be lifted i will draw all men that's the truth so my job is to lift him up and then he will draw all men that's what he said that's what he said that when men say there is a casting down the truth about it is that you will say there is a lifting up so i expect a lifting up all the time because you see a true believer is a possessor tonight you have come here koinonia is a place where we tell you the truth and shortly the power of god will prove that truth to you that what you call a hopeless situation is only a relative statement when you come before him he can turn your wilderness into a fruitful ground hallelujah everybody say jesus the truth son of man what information do you know about these bones can they live again and he said lord i i honestly the reality of these bones now i don't know and he says look these bones can live i believe therefore prophesy he said i prophesied as i was commanded the truth is not just an information it's a force it's a force that compels things to look like god no matter what it is the truth is god's mindset philippians chapter 2 verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus the truth is that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover the truth remains true regardless of your experience or otherwise you see this is the thing about a believer your personal experience is too small to judge the validity of the word of god if i die of sickness today god is still a healer is that true the information i'm sharing with you is very ego stinging because when you've tried everything you know to do have you seen people say i've done everything i know to do 
or I've done everything there is. No, you just did what you knew to do. But there can be another way. There can be another information. Someone can be trying to open a door simply because someone told him turn it once. And he tries, tries. And then another information comes in. Lift it up. Turn it two times. Just because of that little information, that person can stand there two hours wrestling with that door. Arise, shine. Your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. John 1 verse 5, the light shines in darkness. Arise, shine. My light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I will arise and shine, arise, shine. My light is come. And the glory of the Lord, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Give us Isaiah 6 in verse 1. If we can get it in Amplified, that's wonderful. Otherwise, no problem. Amplified says this. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration that situations and circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light arise from the depression and circumstance and prostration in which circumstances have kept you rise to a new life then it says shine be radiant with the glory of god let me tell you something there is an information that when you catch you can start laughing at your challenges you will not even pray about it again it will turn to laughter because you know that that truth will squeeze it into pieces i tell you this hallelujah ah. jehovah will be your everlasting light he'll be your glory your strength and your sight the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun and the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright when Yahweh binds up the wounds of this world heals all the bruises inflicted by this world truth there are things i found in my life about ministry there are things I found in my life about the anointing. When I found them, I jumped. Jumped. Bishop Oyedeko will tell you that light broke and he screamed and turned and said, yeah, I will never be poor again. There are other people who have caught certain things and they screamed and said, I will never be a mediocre again. What have you found? I found your word and I did eat it. It was a joy and a rejoicing. He said, my son, eat thou honey when you find this thing they are alive to those who find them not to christians there is something you can find believe me brothers and sisters if you have not found it you will think those who are talking are arrogant people there are people who have found things the bible says the kingdom of god is like a man who had a treasure and it was missing for as long as it was missing that man was redundant and then he took light and then he started checking it are we together could it be that there is an information that you need to know about god about life about yourself it was gideon who was hiding because there was an information he did not know and all of a sudden the angel appears and says in case you do not know here is an information you are a mighty man of valor and Gideon said, nobody has told me this. I am the least in my father's family and we are the least in the tribe. And that man arose from that revelation. I'm walking in power. Walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. Walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. Everybody sing, say, oh, 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 I know who I am. One more time. Oh, 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 o
the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say it again in the name of Jesus. The days of ignorance are over in my life. Prophesy it. Say the days of ignorance. The days of lies. The days of deception are over in my life. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Lord, I entertain your light. There is something you can know about you that will bring you into the anointing. There is something your mother told you growing up. You are a failure. But hear the truth. Hear the truth. There is something Africa is speaking to you. That we are a third world nation. But in the name of Jesus, I declare. Shabrakoto Sodo Bakata. Ende Karoto Subrakata. I believe the truth. I believe the truth. No more lies in my life. Everything that is not consistent with the word of God, I refuse to believe it. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. Hallelujah. Please sit down. So they may look at you and say sister you are getting to 40 no husband will you ever marry that's their information you see when you introduce jesus to the situation the calculation changes uh -uh. something that should be zero just because you introduce the reality everything changes the psalmist said i had fainted but god i had fainted i knew that i was over all. But God, when they brought him into the situation, he changed everything. Stop listening to lies. There are lies on TV. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are lies that we hear on newspapers. Oh, stop tithing. All those men of God are out to collect your money. It's with your money they used to buy clothes. And they rob you and you listen to a lie and stay back and authorize satan to destroy you our society is full of lies people make money through lies jesus the truth there were many things i didn't see many successful people in my life growing up those who were successful were very far from me Culturally speaking, societally speaking, there was a mindset that was communicated. But when I began to search the word goodness, I found another report. A report I was not born with. And all of a sudden, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me. You know, today we took a stroll, um, myself and the head of protocol, after we went to greet a bereaved family we went somewhere and i was taking them inside the campus and i decided to take a tour of the new structures they are building and while i started passing some sites around the dam and down my eyes were almost i was trying to fight tears do you know why because i saw locations where years ago i sat down to study the truth I passed one place, a botanical garden on your way to the dam. I used to enter that corner and smuggle myself through somewhere and sit down. Broke, but had access to the truth. A failure and a mediocre, but had access to the truth. And this Bible, God gave me an assurance with the word. If you believe me, I will not play games with you. And I was stupid enough to believe. I said, Lord after all by default i don't even have much so if i don't believe you i don't have any option ah look what is made in my life listen if you choose to believe the truth he will change you they've lied to you that your life is not doing well just because um there is there is uh, there is something you are not you know you need to go and connect to this you need to do that i believe in favor but favor is only when it comes from god through men not from men if you don't give 
150,000 to so 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 person in federal ministry of this, you will never get a job. That's how we do it. You are not part of the we. And you find out, and the Bible says that when a man's ways pleases the Lord, that's the truth, that he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Are we together? Listen, the part of scripture you find and believe is the part that works for you. You can see two people operating on different dimensions of realities. Is the part you find. I have found from this word. Listen, and I don't want you to be offended by what I'm saying. But I have found from this word. That it is possible for a man to fulfill his days. I found it. I used to fear death. I think it's one of the things we all fear. Because the teaching I got about death was that any day it can meet you any time. And it looked like a very sincere talk until I searched. I said, God, but how can I live my entire life being afraid? I'm going to live a life traveling all the time. Right? I'm in the air, I'm on road. In the morning, in the afternoon, there are armed robbers, weather conditions. What is the guarantee that I'm going? I mean, I can't live my life. I'm going for a crusade somewhere and I'm afraid. I want to go and heal the sick, cast out demons. But me, the man of God that God will use, you are now afraid whether you arrive safely. As soon as you arrive, your heart returns back and you are like, hey, thank you, Jesus. What is torturous way of living? But there is a truth. Ha! Ah. There is something you can hold and dear death, you look at it in the face and say, oh death, where is thy sting? Now you see, until you have caught that truth, don't make mouth. This is the problem. We talk nonsense in church and say all kinds of things and become victims. It is the encounter of the burning bush that qualifies you to stand before Pharaoh. When you have seen the burning bush, you can stand before Pharaoh and say, hey Pharaoh, stop oppressing God's people. Because Pharaoh will not let you go just because you can speak English. Jesus, the truth. Let me tell you something. Life will dare you to your face. It will take the truth to build a world of fortification. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I believe the word of God. That's why we are gathered here tonight. This is called a miracle service. There is no guarantee anywhere that anybody will be healed. There is no guarantee anywhere that devils will be casted out. Let me tell you, without understanding the truth, any action you take is arrogance. You make a fool out of yourself. What is the guarantee that in the next few minutes, the Lord is going to step in and begin to produce miracles in the lives of people? Is the truth. As at morning, when they were fixing this place, what was the guarantee that people were going to come and all the seats will be filled? What was the guarantee that people will be following us from over 45 nations of the world? Is the truth. There is an information you know. The power of God. That I believe you, oh God, and I'm ready to follow. You will not lie to me. I believe you. You are not a man that you should lie. Not the son of man. I don't doubt him. I believe you. My experiences notwithstanding, I still believe you. Number three, Jesus, the life. Hmm. A revelation of his power and his ability to make a life. Jesus, the life. John 11 verse 25 to 26. An event happened there, Lazarus was a man who had died three days and then Jesus said he sleepeth and they were going to go and resurrect him and when they went they saw his sisters crying now this was talking about physical death but it applies to every area watch this death does not just mean cessation of breathing it means cessation of life Many of us are experiencing death in different areas of our lives. When an organ fails, that's death. Are we together? The sons of the prophet were eating a meal and they looked and said, Ah, there is death in this food. And Jesus said to her, I am what? 
what is resurrection bringing back to life something that is not supposed to have life again hallelujah that for me is the definition of hope 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 bringing back to life a dream that should not come alive again bringing back to life a destiny that should not come alive i live my life drinking and smoking is there hope for me jesus is called the resurrection i should have done well with my life but i'm 70 years now how many more years do i have when the resurrection comes he can bring back to life are we together i should have been a phd holder now but so 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 and so happened to me when the resurrection comes listen to me jesus has the power to make things that are dead in our lives come alive this is good news are we together so the bible says rejoice not over me my enemies you know my fall but you have forgotten that there is a mystery of resurrection rejoice not over me yes i know for now i do not have a job i lost my job yes i know that this and that may have happened in my life but there is jesus the life he can put life back he can put life back let me show you something the bible says very interesting well let's finish it i am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me although his kidney were dead he can come alive he that believeth on me although his finances were dead he can come alive do you know that hopelessness is is one of the major causes of depression in our society you know what hopelessness is a perception that there is no press to anything that is worth producing any result again and people just give up society is full of angry people who just walk around and say look there's no hope no hope for this child no hope for this no hope for me again no i'm already past menopause no child let me just agree that i will never have a child in my life listen to what the bible says job chapter 14 please give it to us seven to nine job chapter 14 read it with me please one to read for there is hope for a tree for there is hope for joshua selman for there is hope for any life are you hearing what i'm saying for there is hope in spite of that medical report humanly speaking you should put your house in order ask hezekiah when a true prophet came and said hezekiah i've heard from god when a man hears from god who else do you consult but hezekiah said no way i know this mystery there is resurrection there is life there is hope he turned his face and said god let's talk i know isaiah is your prophet but i'm your child too let's talk remember now come on god don't act as if you ignore me like that and god said ah, 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 ah. he has compelled a dimension listen let me tell you tonight you have to insist for some things to come back to life don't come some of you don't even pray over some things again because in your mind you have concluded it's over that business will never come alive let you just give glory to god it's over it has gone that destiny will never come alive but it's okay i already know that i would never walk again my leg can't work so my focus now is to just succeed i am the resurrection and the life he says for there is hope for a tree if it be what cut down i like that word cut down not rooted out cut down means the root is still connected the mistake the enemy made was to still leave you loving god i i, I know you lost you lost joy you lost peace you made a mistake i know you now have a baby it should not be but the mistake was that you were cut down not rooted out and the bible says that it will what sprout again talk to me agriculturists that you know that you can cut a tree and children can even put satellite dish on the tree yet it still starts growing have you seen a tree that they use for pole wire it doesn't stop the tree from growing i hear the joy coming hey 
I hear the breakthrough coming. I hear the sound coming. Sound of abundance and joy. I see the lifting coming. Yeah. Hold on. Listen. I tell you that the, the anointing of God is strong upon me. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Give us that scripture again. Give us that scripture. Because God wants to make a statement with this miracle service tonight. He says, for there is hope. Everybody say there is hope. Let the devil hear you. Let all the people who have sat down together in a meeting and say, will she ever rise with this carryover? With 11 carryovers, will you ever rise? The Bible says, there is hope for a tree. There is hope for a tree. It says that it will sprout again and that the tender branch will not cease. We are reading to verse 9. Though the root thereof be wax old in the earth and the stalk thereof die in the ground. Verse 9. Yet, Kabaratos kebranda katashiata. Hold on. It didn't say through the arrival of water, the scent, proximity to life. Proximity to life. The moment you come into a place where there is life, it has not touched you yet. Your roots resonating with life. Listen, listen. Those of you who have done physics, there's something they call resonance. Is that true? That when you use a tuning fork and hit at a frequency, every other object within that frequency answers to it. You were designed by the life-giving spirit. So when Satan tries to bring death, and then you are seated somewhere and you come into an environment where there's life, deep starts calling on to deep. Your dream starts telling you, I'm ready to come back to life. Forget the fact that I failed. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. We live in a society who are experts at burying people before they die. Ah, look at this mama. Nine children, all useless. And she's coming for koinonia. And they say, keep going. Mama, tonight, the resurrection and the life. The resurrection and the life. Hear me. How about a man of God? You know God called you. You know he anointed you. But truly you have not seen increase. Not in your life. Oh God, where will the anointing come? Or maybe you were once anointed and something happened in your life and things went down. And listen, it is true that Jesus died, but did he die forever? He died only for three days. While he had resurrected, men were still talking about his death. Could it be, hold on. Could it be that some of you, while you are in this meeting now, other people are talking about your past life. They don't know resurrection is happening. They are still sitting discussing yesterday. So every time they look at her, they say, I know this lady. Oh, this lady is the most nonsense lady in our environment. You were right, but ask Rahab. Shabbatos Kotabriata. Hmm. Listen, do you know why God instructed that they killed everybody in Jericho? He did not want anyone who knew Rahab's past to be part of those who follow her because she would be part of the lineage of Jesus. Listen, when God wants to make nonsense of Satan, he will keep quiet and allow men finish tearing you down. Sometimes you can even join them and tear yourself. And then when he's done, he says, let me now show you the expertise. Let me show you what makes me God. And he starts building. Many people conclude on men because they don't know God. This God we serve. Are we together? I always use promises. Promise, come, 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 come. With all my heart, you would have concluded this guy was a capon in black acts. Are we together? Years ago, with dreadlocks, he came to Zaria with dreadlocks and earrings. He was an occultist of the highest order. A territorial commander he ran away because they were about to imprison him but brothers and sisters rejoice not over me my enemy no 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 help them under the anointing please
you would have concluded that this brother will never become a because our big mouth in society we are experts at talking about people but while they were talking about Saul God was seeing Paul ah. apostle but I don't even know who my father is I'm not sure they told me that fair woman is my mother that's the kind of background I came from don't worry the God of Israel is an expert look at his life now a fiery man of God with grace and power and anointing hallelujah they had concluded on Zacchaeus you are a thief you are a fraudster you are an armed robber and when God was going he had to climb the tree and God said come down Zacchaeus it's your house I'm going let me show you that I'm, I'm going to your house and at once Zacchaeus said I will repay everybody and Zacchaeus completely changed hear me I came to preach to someone tonight there is a dimension of Jesus called Jesus the life the life the life Jesus the life Jesus the life Jesus the life, Jesus the life. that everything that has died in a man's life can come alive even time can come alive that's the God that we serve hear me you have come tonight some of us from far some of us from several things and you have come to encounter Jesus the life the life giving spirit he can put life back to your finances and the money you lost 10 years combined in one month can return to you listen 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 please let's not make this thing look as if we are acting we are talking about God here apostle but this is 10 years no child and they told me that there are all kinds of cysts and growth in my stomach and then when the resurrection comes he all of a sudden first child triplets second child twins you say god stop he says stop what my name again that child one three two one registers his name the years that the canker worm has eaten hear me hear me Mordecai Mordecai did something that was good and he was his testimony was archived in a book and dropped quietly you see ba, there is a day God gets angry and vows by his name I have seen this truly speaking that God vows a vow read it through scripture that he wants to lift a man when God vows a vow to lift a man I tell you not even your personal faith will stop you there is such a thing that God can say the appointed time is come I've seen people lifted overnight and frankly speaking sometimes they've not even understood certain principles God just vowed with his name tonight I want your faith to be please look listen you have come before God this is not a cinema to watch film you have come with your heart open I want you to insist tonight all these three dimensions are dimensions that for a taking but I perceive that one of the greatest dimensions we need is life there is too much death there is too much death in people's life dead organs hold on listen there are people here they can't walk 10 minutes a young man 25 35 you walk 10 minutes you breathe as if you would die they go to the hospital and say mr man almost everything we see is wrong you need life oh you need life there are many ladies here with all kinds of lumps all kinds of demonic things satan attempting to put another life because there are many kinds of life but when his life comes when his life comes there are destinies you look at them like walking corpses you know everything is there no favor no open doors there are many men here you are hard working 
but there is no life you are just a body walking sweating toiling the cause of hardship from morning till night living from hand to mouth the key is not promotion the key is life life to draw from you again hey, hey. to drink from you again hey, hey, hey. to drink from you again hey, hey, hey. we've come to the road working out the same tonight I insist lift your voice and pray Lord I can't go back the way I came I place a demand a demand on your anointing a demand on your anointing Prayer point number two change my level, oh God. Change the dimensions. Take me to another level. Please keep standing everyone. Lord is going to move tonight in a unique way. Please let me have your attention. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a lot to do tonight. We're going to do it in this order. I'm going to take the altar call now. And then tonight we're going to start with the sick. I just sense a very strong manifestation of the healing anointing. Hallelujah. Now, quickly, let me have your attention. My God, the power of God is so strong, so strong. I already see activities of angels. You're in this place, inside, outside, any of the overflows. One, two, three, four by the roadside. I told you that the cure for the challenges of men is an encounter with Jesus. And there are people here, some of you may be visiting for the first time. 
but you know that you need Jesus genuinely not just as a religious philosophy you truly need Jesus Christ some of you at one point you handed your life over to him but things went haywire and right now you know that you need to run like there's fire on the mountain overflow one overflow two I'm going to count one to five please clear the way for them I want you to run as though you are thirsty and they told you where water is leave your seat right now and run whether you are inside or outside I'll count one to five keep standing one koinonia celebrate them two are you running run to Jesus Lord I'm tired of my life tired of the way things have been I can't pretend it I'm running to you now three celebrate them are you running leave your seat break your pride and run I need Jesus in my life I need Jesus in my life this is a, a matter of urgency this is no pretense this is no church I need Jesus in my life have you decided to follow Jesus no turning back run no turning back have you decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back one more time I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning I'm seeing three people in overflow three there and the Holy Spirit is telling me they are supposed to be part of these people overflow three please quickly there's so much to do there are three people I'm seeing in overflow three outside and the Lord is telling me they should be there don't allow your friends stop you I'm still going to give one more minute one more minute as the Holy Spirit is convicting you you're saying I want to come but I'm a bit shy run make your way quickly come and join us come and join us hallelujah look at me please let them come and join those of you in front please look at me i salute you this is serious business here please there's there's nothing to be ashamed of hold on hold on now you see when most people give their lives to christ they come in emotionally and some are not even serious they come laughing pinching themselves lord jesus and they are laughing and not serious this jesus business is life we are not talking about a certificate we are not talking about a husband or wife the bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower please hear me as you are here make sure that your decision is genuine no one condemns you but i want you to mean it please don't don't play games with god this is the god of heaven i want you to say this from the depth of your heart all of you in front here and those joining quickly if you are joining them make your way to the front say this passionately and truly say lord jesus say it again lord jesus some of you are not saying it say it one more time lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for my sin I believe that you resurrected for me this night I have heard your word and I declare that I need you in my life I hand over my life to you from now and forever 
I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that from today, I am a child of God. Satan, you had my confession. Stay away from my life forever. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you now. Jesus, we present to you the ones you died for. When you hung upon that cross, you saw them. And they were worth your blood, your tears, and your death. I ask, oh God, by the power of your spirit, that you preserve them. Let this not be an emotional decision. I pray sincerely that today will become the beginning of a new season of your grace, your power, your mercy upon their lives. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare and declare that from today, you walk in newness of life. I set you free from everything that holds you down in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I congratulate all of you for making this most noble decision. Never forget this day. Never forget this day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I will ask you to do something very quickly and then you come back and join the service. I want you to follow who is waving his hands. Follow that gentleman waving his hands and they will lead you out and there are a number of people who will welcome you have your details please cooperate with them and uh, all the people attending to them let's make it fast so that they can return back please politely follow them they will ask for your details cooperate with them everyone this way let's honor them as they go very quickly hallelujah can we help them let's make it fast now we're going to do it this way um i'm going to start praying for the sick right right away we're going to pray for the sick now so that we can take out time um let's deal with the sick first i already sense a very strong manifestation of the healing anointing lady look at me the lord is asking me to stretch my hands i command that devil let her go now you had her confession i curse you by the god of heaven I released you now. I'm seeing this lady tied snakes from her leg to her head. I set you free. This is koinonia, the place of encounter. I decree and declare that from today you are set free. And there's something I'm seeing in your stomach. I decree and declare that it leaves you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we are going to pray. Uh, there are certain cases I want to deal with by myself tonight. Um any case please listen any case whether you are in any of the overflows please i will pray for people overflow one i want you to march to your overflow those who are trusting god you came here with for yourself or for your loved ones um but let's do it this way all those who are trusting god for the fruit of the womb if you have an issue with barrenness or a blood related disease hiv cancer or any deadly disease whether you are in the overflow outside or what please come in and i want to minister to you myself hallelujah that doesn't mean please listen listen it doesn't mean if i'm not the one ministering to you you will not be blessed the anointing on me is upon everyone who will be standing to minister to you are we together now so let's not have a rowdy um a crowd there so overflow one i like all of you who are trusting god to be prayed for Please, I want you to move to your projector stands, overflow two, um, overflow three. Those online connect by faith and um, we're going to be praying for you. Those inside, make your way very quickly. The special cases that I ask, make your way quickly, quickly, please. We have to be very fast. There's a lot to do. The reason why we take our time to minister to people like this is because God has anointed us for this reason. Hallelujah. God has anointed us. It's a privilege to carry his anointing and we must take our time to release blessings to God's people. Make your way quickly. Look how many people need the touch of God. What a joy and a blessing to have the anointing and the ability to touch people. Can we all pray as a family whilst they are coming and ask the Lord to touch and heal and bless everyone. Lift your voice and pray. Everyone, lift your voice. Lift your voice, pray. It's a miracle service. Please, those that are coming in from outside, make sure it's only blood-related diseases. 
terminal diseases terminal diseases otherwise you can just wait at your projector stand and then they'll pray for you father you have anointed you have anointed us in this place you have anointed this house to be a tabernacle of miracles lord you have produced untold testimonies is a privilege to be extensions of your hand again ministering to the needs of your people it is your desire that in every territory there must be a place where men and women can find the power of god at work and lord thank you for making this such a place tonight we pray that there will be abundance abundance of your anointing in the name of jesus tonight is serious business i really perceive that there is need to minister to people we're going to have um some of our leaders stationed in various places please i want you to trust the anointing upon them as they come to minister i'm going to just make contact with them um there will at least be two two at different different points and then we're going to pray praise the lord we'll make it very very fast and trust god to minister to you please come um pastor femi Ejimi, pastor alpha where's benga promise how many of you i think we need eight people i have to lay hands on you because i sense that we need we need a, a great one two three four five uh, michael come one of these days we'll begin to train other people and help the, the idea is to help and build people uh, mike leave the keyboard um someone else can play the keyboard you can come this is an opportunity we're going to lay hands and then we're going to trust god um shade will you be strong come she's always had the healing anointing you have the strength please come this lady you see it's a compendium of the healing power of god and um so we're going to pray i think this is okay we're going to pray please those outside if if they don't ask you uh, if they are prophesying to you it's a different thing if they are giving you a word of knowledge it's all right otherwise you don't have to start talking talking and doing all of this lord we agree right now in jesus name my god there's such anointing on my hands as they lay hands on the people lord i decree and declare let your power flow in such dimension in such magnitude in the name of jesus christ let the anointing of the holy spirit come upon you in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit let the fire of god come upon you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that you will carry the anointing of the holy spirit um shade and promise will go to the overflow outside here by the road shade and promise benga and um femi this overflow and then mike and pastor alpha will be at the overflow overflow three now um Ejimi will be with me here pastor alpha um huh? okay two of you are there okay fine who is left michael okay then join them outside this overflow here and then we'll walk with a jimmy inside here praise the lord lord we decree and declare let there be miracles right now let there be signs let there be wonders in the name of jesus let there be such a strong move of the spirit let the sick be healed while this is happening please um i want you if you need to make calls and ask your loved ones to submit their prayer requests let's do that very quickly we're trying to conserve time as well as maximize the grace that is available hallelujah lord we give you all the praise in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ so we'll pray for you now i want you to trust god for miracles trust god for miracles insist that god must give you a miracle hallelujah praise the lord as we worship in your presence there is healing the holy spirit gentle touch is flowing jesus in the name of jesus christ i believe There is healing in your name as we worship, as we worship in your presence. There is healing. The Holy 
sufferings you see this dear lady this lady came all the way from lagos had to resign her job to come here because she was tired of what was happening in her life it's not just about employment came here this lady came i think it was last week all the way because she was nothing at all she was employed but oppression after oppression there's somebody in the congregation I'm, I'm seeing like uh, the Lord is opening my eyes. This is strange. And I don't know what it is that I'm seeing that has to do with elephants. I'm seeing an elephant. And I'm seeing like fire coming. This is a deliverance for someone in the congregation now as I'm talking. Um, I'm praying for the sick, but we're going to minister to other needs. But right now, the Lord is asking me to minister to such a person. So I'm declaring right now that every manipulation of spirits that resonates with what the Lord showed me. Right now from here I decree and declare there is no peace for the wicked. I command judgment right now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ on such a person, wherever you are in this congregation, I decree and declare right now that the power of God touches you right where you are. Right where you are. Right where you are in the name of Jesus. Right where you are. Right where you are in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone at the minister stand. The minister stand. I'm seeing something like an arrow shooting out of your body. Lord, in the name of Jesus, whoever that person is, it must go now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, every strange devil, every strange spirit, we decree and declare that this environment is completely not conducive, completely not conducive in the name of Jesus. I want you to look at this. Look at, look at, what, look at what the devil can do. This is a human being's face. Mama, come. Madam, is this her mother? Mommy, come. How long has this been? This is one year now. A year one plus. Year. A year plus, yes. Her face just started swelling. It started bleeding from the nose. And before you know, it's her, one of her, this her eyes. I out. prayed for her the last time. Yes. You see it going down? Yes, I see it you going down. You see it from the last time? Yes. Who was there when you saw yes. the last time? It's going down. You see it going down now? Yes. I prophesy that in the name of Jesus Christ, right now that the way this thing has started going down it must go down normally and then mama any human agent that is responsible for this thing happening are we together if i am a man of god that person must die this night hallelujah because i'm looking at you hold on I'm looking at you and I'm seeing the face of a woman and I'm seeing a woman sitting on the ground on ground like enchantment I say it again whoever is responsible for terminating attempting to terminate the destiny of this lady by the God of heaven may the ground open and swallow her now. See, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Wickedness is very, very real. Very real. Very, very real. Very, very real. I want you to lift your voice in one minute and say, Father, judgment tonight. Pray! Lift your voice. Shabakato soto bakata. Lembrekete katatatata. Reketo shepekeriata. Everything that must give way for the next level of my destiny to be open, I command it so. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, pray inside, pray outside, pray by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, pray. Shaka toko 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 kesh, rekete kete kata bara 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 bas, mataka to shoprekete. Lente preketa ba shabara na bala na bala na bala. Leketa proskata baranda kapraskata bara toch. Are you praying? Make sure you are praying. Let her go now. Out. 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 I see the rain of your love I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear I see the rain of your love I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it really going to pray seriously right now um, I've been seeing a lot of visions while praying for the sick hallelujah 
there are, there are many many demons that must go many not few many oppressed all kinds of um, strange strange demons bring this girl come bring her I'm seeing a spirit bring her let her go now out victory belongs to Jesus listen hear me now we are going to pray serious that's why I took out time to maximize the healing anointing because um, we want to finish fast we have leaders meeting however um, now that we have dropped this please just focus you have prayed now let me minister to you praise God stand up please everybody we have to pray these are the wicked spirits that are responsible for families families tonight I see an uprooting I tell you listen I want you to stand because I'm seeing people running out now by the spirit not like wanting to run away the spirit running with them that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm asking the people to stand we are going to pray please listen I want you to believe the forces that tie your life tie your destiny it's time for us to pray it's time for us to agree are we together I want you to cooperate with me and let's pray they are strange spirits you will bring them out some don't be embarrassed this this has to do with families this has to do with individuals are we together now are we together yes we are going to pray I'm seeing like a Ghana must go and I'm seeing it tied in the spirit whose destiny is that oh God it's time to be loose now bring them out please I need strings strings of the flowing sound please bring them out at his word every demon every devil there's no hiding place for any power of darkness I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus hallelujah please hold your hands together I want to pray a prayer you are going to help your neighbor now something strange is going to happen to people I want to pray because I'm seeing like fire passing from people to people this this contact must be maximum Lord I pray anyone who is a victim of any oppression as this fire passes now in the name of Jesus once you see your neighbor manifesting please let them come in the name of Jesus I release that fire right now from road to road from people to people from road to road inside outside I command every stranger every stranger every stranger in the name of Jesus every stranger outside overflow one overflow two overflow three online I cause that devil right now that fire is burning that fire is burning every principality every power Shaka -ta 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 -ta. outside mighty deliverances outside from road to road the power of God is setting people free it's time for yokes of captivity to give way it's time for age long captivities to give way hallelujah everyone say after me in the name of Jesus just do what I'm telling you to do say in the name of Jesus every yoke of delay over my life over my family be judged now now watch what happens to you I decree and declare anyone with such yoke I command judgment now judgment now now on those forces let them go now let them go now let them go now Para kato kotos, leke teke teke te, 
Please lift your hands. Shabaratos Kotosh. Tonight I trust God for an extensive time of deliverance. Listen, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing snakes. This is what I'm seeing coming out from holes. Anyone here tied by any spirit, they come to you in the night to sleep with you. Fire at the count of three. One, two, three. Right now, visitors of the night, strangers of men's destinies, I judge you by the God of heaven. Inside and outside, I judge you by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Please put your hands. Sisters, lift your hands. Sisters, lift your hands. Sisters, lift your hands. I want to pray a very serious prayer right now. Sisters, lift your hands. If there is anyone here having any spirit molest you in dreams, appearing as men, appearing as women, appearing as animals, at the count of three, as you shout Jesus, Jesus the life is destroying any dead. Are you ready? One, two, three. I command those devils, those strangers, strangers, powers of witchcraft, molesting people, the daughters of Zion, I curse you. I curse your covenant. Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome You overcome Say Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome You overcome Hallelujah I saw what I'm seeing now in much miracle service and the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands I'm seeing padlocks that's what I'm seeing this is representing men's destinies nothing is happening in your life you are not lazy but doors have refused to open right now at the count of three I want everyone to shout Jesus as loud as you can some of you will literally be caught up in visions and you will see the doors of your destinies open right now oh god i declare that every padlock over any man's destiny over any man's life at the count of three they are open one two three Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to take away the spirit of death over families. Listen, you may not even know, but I want you to believe. I want to pray for you. Death is a spirit. Death is a spirit. Death is a spirit. I'm speaking now. Death is a spirit. Oh, death, where is your sting? Right now. I'm seeing at least 47. I'm seeing the number 47. Every family with death hanging over them. Fire! 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 Upon every family. Fire! Fire! Fire. The spirit of death broken. Hallelujah.
Can I pass through the crowd for a moment? I want God to do a quick work. Please listen. I don't do these things out of religion. It is the presence of God. The presence of God. I don't have time and there's no opportunity to lay hands on anyone. But listen. I just come across your role. I just want you to believe. Listen. Except it is not the spirit of God. But any other strange spirit aside from God. Regardless of what it is and what is causing in your life. It must give way right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Just play me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Listen. Please, I want you to believe. This is not about human worship. But as I pass your road. I'm seeing fire on my left and right. Tonight is the ministry of fire. And like a wildfire, it will pass you and begin to consume things. Some of you, as I pass that physical fire, that heat, Lord, let it be right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That fire, fire. Judging everything, judging every evil from every row, row to row, row to row, row to row. That fire right now, every witchcraft, every power, every witchcraft, every power, tying anyone. Someone's womb is being loose now. Someone's womb is being loose. Someone's womb is being loose. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I go out? Is it, is it possible? Those outside, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Please quickly, we're out of time. We have to conserve time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, all of you right here, through this place, I'm looking and I'm seeing change in the spirit. And as I pass this overflow, please, I want you to believe that every captivity must come to end. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It must come to end. Father, I give you all the praise right now. Right now. A chain is leaving somebody here. A chain, a chain, a chain, a chain. Go, go, go. Now, 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 now. Chains, 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 chains. I break it now. Break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it. Now. In the name of Jesus. You don't have to touch me. Just be. There's somebody here. The yoke of delay is breaking now, 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 now. It's breaking now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, break it now, break now, break it now, break it now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, break it now, break it now, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing a cloud in this place. I release that fire. Break it now, right, right, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, help them, help them, please hold them. Break. Elisha, 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 
Elisha. Who is that? Elisha. Where are you coming from? Ebu, sir. Ebu. Ebu, here. Yes. I want to pray for you. The Lord wants to give you and your family breakthrough. Yes. Elisha, I wish we had time, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm declaring. What's your name? My daddy's name is Elisha. Your daddy's name is Elisha. That's all right. I'll pray for you. Why are you here? You are Elisha. Look at me. I want you to believe in the prayer I'm going to pray for you. God is going to give you strength. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you. I will reverence you. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. When John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, John began to explain to us what he saw. And among many other things, John said he had a voice. And when he turned to see that voice, he saw seven lampstands. Listen carefully. And then John said, in the midst of the lampstand, there was one like the Son of Man. And he began to describe various attributes of him. And then it was God himself who began to give John that interpretation. He says that those lampstands represent the church, the ecclesia, God's body. The lampstands that Christ is found in the midst of them. That light that is also a city set on a hill that should never, never be confused. He says it is the church. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. Christianity is not in danger. Listen carefully. Church is not in danger, but the ordinances of the spirit that make men mighty is in danger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The ordinances, the secrets of God that is a portion to transform men from ordinary people to make men of power and relevance is in danger. We scarcely understand the secrets of God. The pathway that any believer can follow and become a man of grace, a man of power and relevance. I want to share with you very briefly because I want us to pray. Six ways that the precepts of God can and should be preserved in a territory. seeing fire in the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire like a volcano that's what I'm seeing in the spirit a volcano in the spirit she goes like a volcano please can another drummer sit down please let this gentleman come for somebody this man is Still seeing this fire inside, outside. I'm seeing it. It's like a volcano. When when you see God doing these kinds of things, it's, it's not show. It's not show. He's bringing witness. He's bringing witness to the spirit of man, because the word of God must have an agency for performance. He's he's working on people. 
I'm seeing like a volcano rising and exploding. Then the fire is dropping on people. This is what I see in the spirit. This is what I see in the spirit. It's making us witnesses, testaments. Listen, let me tell the truth. There are precepts of the spirit that cannot be lost. We must trust God. We must become true spiritual custodians of these things. Otherwise, a generation is in danger. The death of a man of God should not end the move of God. There are many men of God. We talk about them. They left with the secrets because there were no men to receive. They left with the secrets. Elisha died. Till today, there are dimensions that would have been seen. Gehazi was not positioned to receive. God, God sees my heart. How that I desire that we become spiritual. 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 Not just supernatural. Spiritual. You must, you must understand the realm of the spirit. And sustain capacity to interact with that realm. Otherwise you will not do much. I promise you. That you must, you must learn how to walk with God such that you become an envoy of his presence it's not just a call it's not just a unique call to a man it's not just a unique call to a man it is the product of consistently following a pathway there is a pathway that produces that effect it's not an exclusive preserve of particular men there is a path you can follow that leaves the trace of god's presence it's like a perfume so every time you find expression, there is no man born of a woman that comes under the influence of that presence that will not be affected. That's the realm where doubt dies. That's the realm where all kinds of suspicion go away. You, you are not trying to show your anointed. Your presence always introduces a reality. You are showing men that you are standing in an interface between two realms. And for as long as you are there, you open them up to experiences that their current faith level cannot afford them. This is not just talk, talk, talk. All this empty talk, we keep mocking ourselves. The Bible says, for I did not come to you with the excellency of speech. It is not just about oratory. No. This is not grammar. This is the reality. The Bible, Paul calls it the mystery of godliness. That God can be embodied, domiciled in an individual who was born of flesh and blood. But produce an effect that is strangely supernatural. No man is born with the anointing. No man is born with the anointing. No man is born with spiritual power. Men follow pathways. It's an ancient path. That has been lost there's too much talk too much grammar too much preaching too much listening to every man of god's message and picking out what will make you stand out on stage it, let me tell you the truth if we do not trust god to touch reality we will keep wasting our time educating ourselves do you know what what the average young preacher does hold on what the average young man not just your young, young believer who loves god does is he finds the tapes of five six seven eight men of god around the world and just puts them together and listens to them and there's nothing wrong with that but the purpose of listening to it is to try to synergize enough revelation to give him capacity to speak well so that he will not be ashamed that's a joke if that's what you think brings power and opens the heavens over a man I see is a is a big joke a big joke the realm of the spirit is not an educational classroom it's a place where men are made genuinely there there are there are there are capacities apportioned for people on grounds of working with the holy spirit only the holy spirit gives that ranking nobody you can pretend 
pretend you have it many people pretend they have it but when the door settles down you hear the testimonies Kai, we have lost something serious we must trust God to be trusted with grace to preserve the ordinances of God otherwise some of the young believers coming up the only thing we can give them as a heritage is born again and then they get born again and they don't know what to do and it is this same confuse us that have been ordained week in week out everybody is a general overseer everybody is a president everybody is an apostle everybody is a prophet everybody is a pastor hilarious ordinations happening left right and center and everybody is just holding the mic and we are as confused as those who are trying to teach I say this out of love for the body but we must return we are losing something we are losing something very powerful we are losing something the ordinances the precepts of the spirit there is a spiritual formula that men are subject to we are losing it in the name of ministry in the name of globalization in the name of making sure we expand no sir the average believer does not even know whether his prayer is answered or not. The average believer, does. the only thing we have done is that every time we pray in tongues for a long time and dissipate spiritual energy, there is a consolation based on that energy. So it is based on that pain we go through that we believe it is answered. What, what sort of an, an education is that? The average believer studies the Bible to ease himself or herself from the guilt, the personal guilt that comes from messages every Sunday that you must be spiritual. It is not a personal appetite. It's not a search. If, if that guilt were taken away from us, we would throw the Bible in a heartbeat. That's why we love using any other thing, job or whatever. It's only because we are free and everybody knows we are free. So we can't say we are not serious. So when there is a legitimate crown, then we excuse it. How the precepts of God are preserved in a territory. Our sensitivity largely very dull largely very dull any and everything happens around us and there is no acumen no perception we see and hear things we do not have strength and capacity to interpret so we become victims of anything and anybody who presses a little more than usual we we accept it that that person is being called into the ministry Number one, the first way, listen carefully, that the purposes of God are both established and preserved in a territory. Like our territory, Zaria here for instance, is prayer. Write it down, prayer. The first way the purposes of God are established upon a territory and also preserved is prayer warfare and intercession write it down a lost act in the body of christ genuine warfare and intercession let me tell you something if we ever have a generation that laughs at warfare and intercession that's the generation that will not live to hand over to another i promise you i promise you our our spiritual ignorance is tilting us gradually to downplay the role of spiritual warfare and intercession over setting the atmospheres and the climates of territories to allow that territory host God brothers and sisters it takes prayer it takes genuine warfare and intercession for the heavens to be open over a territory enough for the purposes of God to be established warfare Ezekiel chapter 22 it's a long reading 23 to 31 but the verse of emphasis is verse 30 Ezekiel 22 
please help us media Ezekiel chapter 22 and the word of the Lord came unto me saying long reading quickly please just go to verse 30 because at the, at the way we are going we are going to waste too much time and I sought for a man among them now this was God angry with a territory that's why what I wanted us to read but because of time we'll just look at that God was angry with a territory and was about to pour his indignation and his judgment and God said that mercy dimension of me was still there but I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land for what for the land not for the church I'm talking about taking over territories preserving the precepts of God over a territory a man that will stand for the land so there are men that can stand for the land not just their churches that because of their presence and the business they do with God certain things can happen to territories they don't even know why it came and how it came but a man stood for a land that I should not destroy it but I found did he say I did not find human beings they were human beings many but I found none that man built in capacity and understanding the ministry of prayer let me tell you this believe me hear me church of the Lord Jesus Christ everywhere here in any nation but more specifically in Zaria if we stop praying in Zaria because of some kind of spiritual laziness you will be shocked the way darkness will prevail over the city are we together the ministry of prayer is one of the foundational tenets that must be preserved in every generation i don't care whether the believer is going to be a man of god or a civil servant or a politician the ministry of prayer must be indoctrinated in every believer he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Not just need driven prayers alone. But we must graduate from realms of just praying, give me tea, give me bread, to taking over lands. That because of your presence in the territory, you subdue the controlling powers the powers that mold the mindsets of people the powers that are responsible for prevalent tragedies over a nation that you come into a city and find accidents anyhow all kinds of things anyhow and you realize that you have been made a king and a priest over that territory and part of the ministry of your priesthood is advocacy that you go before God and you stand face to face with the controlling powers that's what men did in the Bible Abraham stood in for Sodom and Gomorrah are we together preserve the family of Lot the wife chose the way she wanted Joseph stood in preserve certain things Daniel stood in preserve are you not men who preserve the purposes of God your generation the ministry of warfare and prayer the ministry of warfare Ephesians chapter 6 when we read from verse 10 to 19 the Bible tells us listen carefully the Bible tells us that um, we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might then it says we should put the full armor of God are we together then it says how that we we do not war against principalities and powers but against um, rulers and flesh and blood but principalities and powers and all of that it begins to tell us that in every territory these demonic structures exist hold on let me preach to educated people you know sometimes because we have gone to school because we are rich small money small job we and sometimes innocently and truthfully I hear preachers downplay the presence of controlling powers over cities simply because at the present they are doing well let me tell you something Satan is many things a fool is not one of them I hear what I'm saying Satan is defeated Satan is old Satan is several things but a fool is not one of them 
he has the advantage of age time he has studied mankind different species of people have lived upon this earth he has had an advantage of one-to-one -one experience satan has existed before several dispensations before adam's dispensation that brought us into the sea every territory has controlling powers every territory has controlling powers if you see the purposes of god prevailing in that territory brothers and sisters it's not because the controlling powers are not there an agency in the spirit a system has been lifted in the heaven that has clamped down the activities of darkness enough to allow the purposes of god find expression that's why i said if we stop praying or if we concentrate on childish immature prayer lord give me tea tomorrow again oh god i forgot to ask for bread yesterday there is a place where you ask for your needs but notice how jesus taught us to pray our father who art in heaven we reverence you after reverencing him the next thing is your agenda your kingdom come your kingdom come your kingdom come upon a land upon a territory listen the concept of prayer chains the concept of prayer groups the concept of prayer cells in territories must never end are you hearing what i'm telling you yes now the the, the challenge with many people is that the moment people start praying carnality comes in and they are looking who is the leader among these three people what is the name of this ministry of four of us i don't know who taught us that prayer groups prayer cells prayer chains there should be some structure of leadership but you know we have this mentality and and especially some of us who are coming up are mentoring this wrong thing from some of us men of god the moment people start praying everybody is obsessed about who is the leader who has the protocol to follow him if if we do like that then the devil is going to destroy us in every city and territory in zaria there should be prayer portals that's how the kingdom works i'm a good student of revivals that's how it should work in samaru there should be units of men and women praying high in dogo there should be people there has to be representations of the kingdom sending an incense of prayer on a daily basis that's why i thank god for all the groups scattered around and notice that's what satan hates the moment there are people praying some kinds of agitation must arise from anywhere preservers of the ordinances of god gone are the days where churches start as prayer groups now churches start as intentional organized platforms for the enjoyment of the man of god are we together that before a man of God starts ministry, he has sewn his clothes for one year. Are we together? The offering basket has been made. Tight envelope is in is, is intact. What is it? We, we better be careful. This joke that we keep joking with ourselves. Every correct ministry starts as a it doesn't let me tell you most men of god that are being used mightily by god today ask them their intention was never ministry they were men who made themselves available when god called them they went back and cried and said god can you use somebody else god will say you are the person you can choose to say no but i'm not using any other person you are the one i will use but now you see the appetite with which we rush into this thing and the devil doesn't he it doesn't stop us because there's whether we are in it or outside it, there is, it makes no difference to him we are still equally ignorant prayer that's how this ministry started prayer every day fire on the altar and i'm not talking of the kind of prayer that is for one hour and you talk for 60 minutes and you say let's let's thank god that's bible study prayer should be an intense time of engaging in the spirit only to be interrupted shortly to establish a few things strengthen the understandings of the people the fire continues this is the kind of prayer that can host heaven in a territory let me be honest with you 
Many territories have a lot of repentance to do. Many families have a lot of repentance to do. The prayer lives of many people are under attack. When the devil finds out that there's no hope of you backsliding in prayer, he tells your prayer to become a selfish one. So you are praying for hours, but you are making minimal, minimal spiritual progress. I insist, prayer chains, prayer groups, there are many of you here that the burden is in your hand. It's not carnality. And it is not ministry either. When you, let me teach you something. Every time you get to a new land, before you get accommodation, find somewhere where you can pray. Scan around the back of one tree. Shout and hear whether it disturbs anybody. If that's good, dedicate it as an altar to start with. Don't go around and say, where can I get a hotel and all this rubbish? No. Find a place to pray. Somebody will join you. Another person will join you. The devil is in trouble. Once there are up to two people or three that can agree to be praying. Apostle, but what is the name of the ministry? It's not, it doesn't have a name. The ministry is traveling in the spirit until the purposes of God are portioned for that territory. So it doesn't matter where you are. The assignment is the same. If you leave Zaria for a three-week break and you are in Kogi for that three-week every demon and devil in Kogi state will feel the fire when you return it doesn't matter someone else too is returning there so there's fire everywhere say everywhere but now you find out that some places are as cold as ice whereas some other places are on fire do you know whenever you travel for a ministry to a to a ministry the purpose is not just to go there to watch a superstar the purpose is to carry like a coal you go and fetch some of it are we together that's why when i see people come from other places i like laying my hands on them it's not just for showmanship so you carry something the goal is to take it back to your territory the same way we do in the physical when they want to teach an organization certain things and they can't sponsor all of them what do they do they pick one man is that true or a few people send them abroad for the training when they return back they teach the people not shine with it not shine with it this is where we are missing it train the people one of the biggest killers in ministry is title and that sense of control over men if we don't repent out of it you know i look at people and there is such an obsession to be the leader okay this group is the name is is, is, is um, salvation power intercessory group and i'm the one i'm the, the, the i'm the chief uh, uh, coordinator of it that means i'm the one who prays more and all these ones are my children you start praying in two months everybody that comes here is your child including people like our mother here that came to all, all this this poor self-esteem that we have transferred into our prayer lives and ministries this title and an obsession for platforms is what is killing the move of God in many territories. Do you know there are people as students, years ago, there are people who had different prayer groups. When, when all of them were finishing, they just left. They've gone on other places doing great things, but most of us, you pray for two days and then the next thing you carry a piece of paper. Who is really the secretary among these five people? We need to define it because the other day I didn't tell anybody to leave prayer and this other lady started leaving. When did she join this thing before? And you see, we, we start politicizing it. Are you not from Adam? Me too, I'm from Adam. That one came, I don't say from Lagos. He said, we don't want to bring all these kind of things. And we kill the move of God with very frivolous, childish things. Another thing that kills prayer is love. No, not love, relationship. Hello? I keep saying it there are people till today they have no business loving anybody please hear what I'm saying all this thing of coming to the house of God for one month and you're already eyeing every sister every brother you are in love no sir this is not how we train people we train people to look for God first press into God have a testament a, a track record then you can love but now everybody is, is 
just you, you come in two days you are praying people are closing their eyes praying and what you are doing is you are looking out for for who it is to marry i'm not saying god cannot use those platforms in fact god should use them are we together however your heart if the reason why you are in several prayer groups is to find a wife or find a husband you need to re-engineer and renew your mind and repent and ask for forgiveness and concentrate on the major reason why you are there first most people who become mightily used by god never go there to marry they go there to seek god they pray with all their heart and serve and one day while they are praying god will tell them you see this 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 lady it's even God that will tell them, my son, look, you have been serving me sincerely. This, this one that you are serving, you need a helper. I said, God, I can continue. God, it's me that I say you need a helper. But now, we are the ones bombarding the gate of heaven. A prayer request full of, oh God, won't I marry? And God, what have you done for me? You have not done anything. Nobody has been saved as a result. It's a scam to come to the house of God. You are not contributing anything. And the next thing you want to take, and and usually it's God's best we want to take. Oh, come on, please. Are we blessed? Let me be honest with you, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's return to the place of seeking God sincerely and passionately. Or coming to the house of God and everybody is checking. What did this one, this prayer group? Ah, I like this suit that this one is wearing. I know. Father, your kingdom come in this territory. There is darkness. Lord, we just noticed that 11 people died in nine months. That means there is a spirit passing through that territory, unhindered. And all of a sudden, one faithful day, that spirit will hear a sound from the earth. Shakatakatakata. Lekotakatabriakata. As it's moving to high in Dogo, someone is taking it from there. Let me tell you how you drive spirits. You make the heavens unconducive. Don't laugh at what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you how this thing works. Because they will always live where there is fire and settle down. And wait for a backsliding territory. And then return back. This is how many of those we admire today. That's how they were raised. They were never. And you means here asking. Those of you who were there when Koinonia, when he and I started. When you got born again, in two weeks, it will be as if you have spent one year in Christ. Because there was fire everywhere. There still is. But because we are a lot more organized now, it is very difficult. When people got, there were people who would get born again, filled with the Holy Spirit from day two, they start prophesying. And even with the prophesying, they are not going anywhere. Because there are still demons to get out of there. As they finish prophesying, they go and humble themselves and sit down and learn. But now someone gets born again after one month because of the gift of the spirit he prophesies she prophesies the next thing they start speaking to people they speak mistakes into the lives of people because they are seen correctly but the dynamics of interpreting spiritual things is not there and before you will now learn and grow you have misled several people gift is not maturity you need to stay with god no matter how you rush you must stay that fire that fire is the maker of men. Anybody that dodges fire, don't trust him. Don't trust him. You must be refined as of gold. Our desires and appetites must be put genuinely to seek God. Say amen. amen. Prayer. I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging the church in Zaria. I'm encouraging the church everywhere. There must be prayer units. Most ministries do it. But many ministries, what, what they do is not really prayer unit. It's just maybe home sales, which is wonderful. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Do you know why we will not do it as Koinonia? Because you are an extension of the ministry. The goal is not Joshua Selman in every home. The goal is the kingdom, the power, the glory of God. Your house can become an altar. Your small area can become an altar. Two of you, three of you can begin to pray. It doesn't matter that God started with you. It doesn't need to have a name. The name is prayer. Seven to nine. Five to six in the morning. Nine to ten. Every day or two days in a week or three days in a week. 
you do this and see what begins to happen let me tell you what begins to happen the moment you pray there will first be silence one month two months you will start seeing physical agitations the demons that are resident in men will start reacting something is happening in the realm of the spirit your own loved ones will start fighting you for reasons you cannot explain and say look um you are becoming proud and you say no no sir i'm not because you are becoming proud the moment they say that remember spiritual intelligence you know it's not the individual you you respect the body but go back in the spirit and say satan i'm still there i know it's you jesus looked at peter and said satan get thee behind you and you go and continue and then one day let me tell you how god will announce that he has come to that territory a spectacular move of god will happen one day you will see people in a family and they are just sitting down watching football and the power of God breaks out in that house. Breaks out in the house where they hate the Holy Spirit. Guess who the first to be filled with the Holy Ghost will be? The Father himself. Shatata bakata. And you are wondering, my father? My father? Yes, your father. This controversial person who is so scientific. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the one God. Your prayer. The Holy Spirit has been eyeing him and on that day we have missed it there are many territories that are cold so the only way people can get some fire is when they rush and converge in particular places the place of convergence is important but the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are it should be a place to come and receive a greater fire can you make a commitment in one minute that you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory? Pray. Pray in one minute. Cast away lukewarmness. Some of us, our lives are under attack. We are seeing it, but we do not care. The grace for prayer is zero. Every and anybody is distracting your prayer life. I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord, in the staff quarters, find a space through me. Lord, in prison, we represent an extension of that altar of prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, let your prayer be focused on impact, not titles. Impact not titles if you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church lock it down and go and start praying alone yes sir yes sir don't invite anybody let them come and meet you praying and you are praying and god is watching you my beloved son no carpet no canopy no mic no suit no nothing but a genuine desire to seek him and god is saying i i am watching listen all this all this running around am i a prophet or am i apostle is nonsense it is the place of prayer and work. there is nobody that starts ministry and starts working with god knowing who he is even if god tells you it will not look like that are you hearing what i'm saying all this I am apostle this just wait and see it will happen you are joking nothing will happen it is in the place of prayer as that fire refines you it starts drawing you to become something and everybody starts saying this is the training of a prophet even you you may mistake yourself for an evangelist because the only thing you did was crusade but then it's eventually as it's building you you know that no this training is not an evangelist training ah, why is this unusual ah, there are people who think they are calling their 
some of you here seated you are born prophets with the office of a prophet but you have not seen one vision because it's not about the vision keep praying just continue just continue you will argue with anybody and say no sir i'm not a prophet me i i know i'm a pastor because i'm a good teacher you will find out that teaching is not even part of it just keep praying the refiner's fire comes through that prayer when your heart is being purged are we together now flesh is being taken away one day you begin to pray and all of a sudden you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension many people who are calling themselves many offices take it from me they are wrong they don't know it is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you you say you are a pastor who told you just because someone prophesied he saw in part and he said so he may be right but he may not be it no don't say just because you saw a ring you saw a hand you say i'm a prophet i'm a prophetess i'm an apostle no sir don't flatter yourself let the place of prayer incubate you when you come out fully the name that you are will be shown not just by titles results 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 will show who you are if you are a prophet don't tell us let the results show it show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer show us the argument the ability to perceive realities that's what makes a prophet show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit don't come and talk jargons and waste our time show us the performance that comes based on the word of god show us the throne in heaven that backs that office don't say i'm an apostle show us the throne that backs you show us the keys of the territory that was given to you we go around bragging calling ourselves names flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves Pray in one minute, Lord, a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession. Praying over a land. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Restore me back, oh God, to the ordinances of the fathers. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back the ordinances that help men to walk with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago. When I shook that man, as soon as I shook him, tears filled my eyes. I was almost asking him, where did your fire go to? What happened to you? What made you cold like this? Who deceived you? What did you start listening to? Where did you go? Which association did you join? Restore my fire. Lift your voice and pray. Cry it from your spirit. Restore my fire. Shakatakata. Leketo Santos Cabriata. Restore my fire. Restore it, O God. The destiny of a territory is at stake. The destiny of a territory is at stake. Makatokatakatakata. Sheketekete. This is not the issue of being a man of God. This is not the issue of being in ministry. Preserve us of the ordinances of the Spirit. Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail.
Fashion is, is eating us up. I believe in fashion, look good, but it's complete nonsense if you don't pray. Can we pray in the spirit just for one minute? Just, just to allow the Holy Spirit to bring this. There are gentlemen that don't pray. We are overconscious of ourselves. No, sir. Teach your children to pray. Teach your children to pray. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Prayer. Preserve prayer in every territory. Preserve it in your house. Preserve it in your life. Preserve it everywhere. Don't let it go. No matter who laughs at you, no matter how Western, those of you listening from other nations of the world, restore prayers back to your homes. Restore prayer back to your churches. Whether you are in America, whether you are in London, it doesn't matter where. Restore prayer back. Prayer has equal value everywhere. Whether you are rich or poor, your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life. Number two. How are the ordinances of God advanced and preserved? A regular convergence of believers within, within that territory. The second way that the ordinances of God are not only transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained, equipped, empowered. There is no territory that can preserve a spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers be it a regular church service be it a midweek service be it 
different interdenominational programs it doesn't matter there has to be a regular convergence there must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch they are trained they are equipped they are empowered then they also receive the blueprint of god's current emphasis is one of the highest advantage of coming together when believers come together the whole territory can hear what god is doing now don't assume that because god moved in a particular way yesterday that's what he's still doing today when a territory dissociates itself from psalms 133 a convergence for the purpose of being equipped it is for this reason that god anointed some he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory so what what happens here every week is the will of god a convergence of men and women are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd that there, there is a joke are the people cheers the more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of god provided the dispensers of that truth are in touch with god is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor the king there is not the man of god the king there is the king of kings in the multitude of people within a territory don't have a territory of five million people and the largest church in that territory is 300 people and you say it doesn't matter what else matters why didn't jesus die for 12 people and say 12 people receive my salvation then any other person who is interested no he died for the whole world don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of god and the women of god may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that God is against crowd when you reject it it looks like you are being spiritual but that's been carnal anybody that knows God must love people Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 they continued Acts 2 and they continued look at me who are the day the community of believers within that territory they continued steadfastly consistently unbendingly in the rain in the sunshine convenient or not convenient the sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you there are people who come to church and now i believe in excellence but just a little heat somewhere they said i'm too i mean i'm i'm, I'm too i'm too ah, 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 ah. steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we're reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possession and their goods and parted them etc etc 46 and they continuing daily not even weekly the church of old they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and what did God do who is the person who brings a crowd a man of God please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of God are using oratory you can invite animals by gimmicks not men men are not stupid a crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots there are people who are sensible and went to school 
when you see crowds god brought them don't get into that thing of saying people are just gathering just for entertainment no sir no sir there may be one of two exceptions but you don't generalize there are places god is doing mighty things this place is one of them the bible says and the lord added to the church how many daily such as should be saved so the multitudes of people that come are people sent by god to find salvation there must be regular convergence when satan wants to frustrate the purposes of god in a territory he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren are you seeing that now that's why things like a crisis is very bad because among other things it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn thank god for platforms technology has afforded greater opportunities today most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of what god is doing in that ministry to connect and follow there are all kinds of opportunities for growth number three how is the kingdom advanced in a territory how are the ordinances of god preserved in a territory ready an open display of real miracles signs and wonders beyond the church walls let me tell you how god is institutionalized in a territory an open display not a private quiet secret doubtful manifestation of his power an open display of real genuine miracles signs wonders that are beyond the church wall out of all the miracles jesus performed please write it and look up out of all the miracles jesus performed less than one percent of them was done in the church is that true he was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body they were going out a woman was crying had lost her son had lost her husband and he said what's going on here and he said this woman is about to leave he stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known it doesn't bring God glory the glory God receives is in the announcing of what he has done I know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of God our mother came here and shared testimony our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life do you know what that does to you it strengthens your faith and then when the miracle happens in your presence it is beyond doubt that's why listen listen if you're a man of god here you must trust god for grace for instant performance of the world instant performance it is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results but there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching god in action you saw it before during and after when jesus finished declaring his his um call in luke chapter 4 he told the guy with the withered hand he said for starters to prove to you the hand of god is upon me mr man stretch your hand when he stretched his hand that was beyond doubt the highest that can happen to you is you will be criticized and hated but i assure you god will be glorified an open display why do we need an open display of miracles within territories it creates convictions not just in the heart of church members in the heart of the community many communities do not believe in god because they have not seen him coming in an open display the day god anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say god revealed to me that in in five months they are going to tar this road and people laugh at you and say stupid pastor if you want cheap publicity go on air and all of a sudden a rich man comes within that territory 
and pass that road in five months you don't need to tell them god has done it the next time they see you that convicting power the day you now speak and say i saw death in this community they will not laugh at you again they do not take our word serious do you know why bloggers and journalists write everything about men of god because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of god something that defies principalities and signs and wonders most of this open display is largely done in the south that's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there the, the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings the miracles that happen you will see people sitting on the street selling akara selling pap and watching people rise up from wheelchairs now let me tell you it does not matter how hardened you are if you see a real miracle you must go back and think about it you can choose to argue but the truth still remains the truth what has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting those who have laughed at you and said koinonia every time you must trust god for an open display everybody say an open display that one day you step into the parlor and all of a sudden someone that is to go for surgery maybe your loved ones just because you stepped in there while they are busy criticizing a man of god on tv you look and say daddy the lord just said i should tell you that this cancer is gone and he laughs hey, young boys i was with you i was i remember serving god in boys brigade when i was growing up while they are talking all that drama there is instant miracle and he touches his stomach he will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say no no what is happening and within a short time the lord is glorified let me tell you what they'll start calling you uh, where is prophetess pastor evangelist we're about to pray is god saying anything that's a sign that god is working god is working something powerful in this time god is raising mighty men in our days he won't stop he won't stop till his church looks like him he won't stop no he won't stop till my life looks like him acts chapter 19 please quickly acts chapter 19 brothers and sisters we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of christ this anointing thing is not for showmanship the anointing is a silencer of doubters charles and francis hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is worth a thousand words our noise is too much we need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the spirit that stretches people's unbelief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve God. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. 11. And God wrought what kind of miracles? There are ordinary miracles. They are supernatural in themselves. But they are special miracles. By the hands of Joshua Selman. Verse 12. So that from his body. This is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body we are brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons today we just use it out of showmanship a man of god just says hey, what did you say is wrong with you sir darkness is all over our house so bring his handkerchief i hold it we spit on it we rub it on our face people carry it back home like a charm one year after that handkerchief arrived home nothing happened it's a sign that there's no power period obed edom and the ark of God was taken to his house in 90 days. How many days? 90 solid days. It's true that I know that some miracles can take time. But something should start working after some time. Are we together? If I lay hands on you to be delivered. And after two weeks you come back one month. Nothing has happened. That means something is wrong. Not with you, with me. I should go back for a retreat. And say lord these hands otherwise a day will come the hands will just look like tissue paper as it's coming on your head you believe that nothing is happening keep these hands anointed oh god 
keep these hands anointed. Keep these hands anointed. That's a good prayer to pray for yourself. Keep these hands anointed. May I never stand upon the stage and waste the time of God's people. May I never lay hands on someone or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change. This is not about showmanship. When your hands are empty, you are not in ministry. Let me tell you, you are just, you are just a, no. Abba. Believe what I'm saying. Keep these hands. Preserve it. Preserve your grace. Preserve the mystery of the oil you have put upon these hands. He said, God brought mighty miracles. Give it to us again, please. By the hands of Paul. What is happening through your hands? Nothing. 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 You don't have to be in church. What is happening through your hands? What happens to my destiny if I shake you? You claim that God lives in you. Brothers and sisters, what has happened to your hands? Nothing. Oh, let me agree with you. And we hold people. While we are praying, their eyes are opening. We are the only ones who close our eyes. Because they don't believe in us. They know that that prayer is just nonsense. In Jesus' name, amen. They say, thank you, sir. And they go back and say, sorry, can I see this man of God? Because that's the real person they know who solve their problems. I want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute. And say, Lord, put something upon this hand. Put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes. It's not a carnal prayer. I want you to sincerely pray. Shake it like a source of a cup here. Put an anointing upon my hands, so God. There are too many sick people in my environment. Look at the brother that shared his testimony. He used his hand to hold the phone, and with a single call, a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Place an anointing on my hand. Place an anointing on my hand. Hallelujah. He said, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. 13. And certain of the vagabond Jews, copycats, exorcists, they took it upon themselves, upon them which had an evil spirit. You know, the name of the Lord saying, We adjure you. They thought it's just by. by big man is him or wearing nice clothes and one day they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits are we together now we are reading to verse 20 and then 14 says and there were seven sons of one skiva a Jew and a chief of the priest which did so 15 and the evil spirit answered them that's the side effect of lack of true power it's not that the devil is trying to confess. This is not confession. This is a question. You, are, you, are, you, you stupid man of God. You think everybody is faking it. He called those who are real. Known by the realm of the spirit. Not by members. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Hi. Who are you? When a demon spirit asks you, who are you? Is that a nice thing? From the realm of the spirit. They are watching you every day. You have one suit. You went for a program. They kept water in front of your table. They did a, a good publicity. And they said, now it's time for the man of God, a man of strange anointing. And you hold the mic. And you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you. And all of a sudden, the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say sorry I don't know what happened my mind is ah no there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army Make progress. Verse 16. We are reading to 20. 
and the man in whom the evil spirit was did what leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded the consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real there are many arrogant people in the body of Christ listen to me let me give you a very true secret the power of God is unlimited but its operation in the body of believers depends on many factors which includes their level of spiritual growth you must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually there are many arrogant people they would do anything you are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free you just get up by yourself carry a bottle of oil and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft I'm, I'm, I'm in Christ and you go there as soon as you get there you start pouring oil around the compound nobody talks to you you just find out that that night as you are sleeping the next day you get up and find yourself in the hospital what happens they say that's how the spirits work they don't talk to people the next thing you just whatever happens to you is their answer listen it's not everything you see that is that is all that there is when you see a man of god moving in the anointing it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening but there are interplay of spiritual laws a man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder and you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere when that man if he's spiritual if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done are we together it's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever no that's why we must grow but as we grow we must trust god to know certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight there are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough it will take the corporate body to bring it we do not know and one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him so we must have that that's just a lesson for us to learn let's read down please quickly media don't take it away just leave it there so that we'll hurry up please help us and this was known to all the community are you seeing now something unpleasant now is known to all the community jews and greeks also dwelling at ephesus and fear came upon them and the name of the lord was magnified they saw the apostles healing the sick and i'm sure that they said what is there what is their miracles anybody can heal the sons of Sceva went to try it when the demons beat them it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere and the bible says that the people glorified god and then verse 18 says and many that believed did what as a result they came and confessed and showed their deeds 19 we are reading to 20 many of them which also use curious acts that means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it it was working small by small but when certain men came into that city they got everyone packing out including magicians do you think if that book did not do something for them wouldn't they have thrown it since they saw something superior and powerful and the bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who a community imagine a popular herbalist in bromo or somewhere maybe zaria city bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and say i was sent to go and kill one koinonia lady and just because i saw her cat walking i thought it was all about the reform when i touched fire i got a reply and a response that i have never seen for 30 years of herbal practice is what happened there and they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver 20 popular scripture 
so mightily bring the word of God. Why? Because of a public display of miracles, signs and wonders. We need the supernatural. We need to cry for the anointing. We need a restoration of authentic spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives. Man of God, don't preach without power. It's not about saying, there's somebody here, the power of God will throw you. That's not what we are talking about. That, that's not power. We are talking of results. Results. Undeniable results. Like some of you are seated here now, you are coming for the first time. You will not need to tell people you came for Koinonia. You will just go back and all of a sudden you find out that something has shifted. You open your Bible. A true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter. It's until the experience leaves and then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely. Let me give us one more. There are six, but I'll just stop at number four so that we pray. Number one is prayer. Number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory. Number three, an open display of miracles, signs and wonders beyond the church walls. Number four, intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. The fourth way, the ordinances of God are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. This is a serious one. Let me tell you this. Failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget God. Not just forget his ordinances, but forget God. I'm watching that and I'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of Christ and even the church in Zaria. Who are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now? Everybody has left them. And we are focusing on ministry. Who are the people mentoring those in secondary school? Thank God for FCS. Thank God for um, um, CEM. Thank God for all of these people. But there are some of you here. You need to go back and begin to make sure that young people like Shade's child here. That by the time they are growing, they are not only receiving education alone. There must be an intentional mentorship of younger people. Most people, is the mistake of the American church, they left their children. So you will see a mother who was an old Baptist woman, served God all her life, but you will find out that her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love God. We must concentrate. Right now, most people from the ages of 17 downwards, all they are obsessed about is phones, Android devices, PS4. I don't have a problem with it. But their entire obsession, oh, what OS are you using? You hear that? That's all they think about. Oh, I'm using this PS4. There's this. Ah, they need fire. Oh, they, need, they are not too young. They need serious fire. I'm not against that. It's the reality that comes with that age range. But we must be able to guide people. That's why I love it when you see our children come here for Koinonia. I know that many of you say, ah, are they too young to understand? Ask occultists whether the children are too young to understand. You see a small child tie something like a napkin and do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down. That's the child of a herbalist. And they tell you, ah, that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe. That small boy you are saying that is my son. He's your son in the physical. In the realm of the spirit is something else. An ancient spirit is seated on that small child. There is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things. They may be too small to articulate it, but their spirit is healthy enough to receive it. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Second Timothy. And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses he said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others too a superstar lifestyle is not god's plan god's plan is not superstar apostle joshua selman 
God's plan is Apostle Joshua Selman committed by grace certain precepts and your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so may God forbid that the day will come in Zaria when the average young man does not know God say amen may God forbid that in Zaria during a church service we will have young people hanging around sagging their jeans and dancing around and toasting themselves instead of praying and crying to the God who can change any man's destiny may God forbid that is not your child that will refuse to know God listen 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 our children must love God and they must love God genuinely somebody is indoctrinating a generation to hate God I want you to beware there is a secret indoctrination of a generation ages 5 to 15 must be preserved those of you here that God is calling you into children ministry receive an anointing for it it's not all about giving children biscuit and sweet let them cram the memory verses that's how we started children now don't know any memory verse again you ask them john 3 16 they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense teach them don't say it's not useful let them know when we were being raised they taught godly songs now in most schools children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents a little child is singing a song that even as an adult you look at him and say no this should not be there must be restoration of godliness cem may god anoint you more and revive you more please fcs may god anoint you and revive you more individual children ministry groups may god anoint you and revive you more because if you yourself are not revived what will you teach the children bad things bad things that's what our children learn now things that are more than their age and we say it does not matter it matters you have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things don't let them watch it don't let them watch it there are times you need to regulate i'm not i'm not trying to be harsh but there are times you need to regulate all this this a child of seven years watching television from morning till night switching from one music channel to the other hearing things and receiving them in the spirit and authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them we must preserve godliness say amen, amen. you don't like what i'm saying i don't plan to stop at all we must say it again and again some of you god gave you instructions before you became popular to visit secondary schools and primary schools not with the name of any ministry and bless them but now that you have become apostle joshua selman you have become madam madam whatever businesswoman or whatever you have stopped go back repent and go back we have this mentality that when we are ministering to children it's a sign that we ourselves are children it's the society that makes it so in a bit to show that we are matured we leave the children and say look let's start talking to married men jesus said let the little children come to who come to me he says and do not forbid them for for such is the kingdom of heaven please return back to children ministry in the name of jesus christ when a child looks at you and does like this to you don't smile at the child and rub the head carry the hand and spank it and say no you don't do like this you greet people are we together most of us watch children do all kinds of things a visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing and you are watching is that good bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child but a rod of correction not discussion you don't have to be hostile on children a little spank with two fingers one two and then tell them what they did that was wrong don't just leave them cry this is what you did mommy does not like it daddy does not like it for that reason one two jesus too does not like it In include jesus let them learn and know that it's not just you alone preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom there's this song that says our generation 
shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. I made a vow that for as long as I'm alive, my generation must know God. It's a covenant I've entered with myself. There's no going back. There's no discussion. There's no hope of going back. To go back is to die in life and in death. It's a vow and a covenant I've made with myself and everything around my life. It is to serve Him forever and to introduce Him to a generation. God is waking us up. Stop playing games. Don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of 5,000 people. You can start now. Some of you, you are the firstborn. You are the only one who knows God in your house. Your, your fourth born can look at you and say, stupid girl, that's a joke. You need to cast out that demon out of their head and organize a standard Bible study using a koinonia message and tell them, sit down. You are 10 years older than him. He's insulting you that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined. The day I give birth to a child who insults me, that, that day, I'm not going to concentrate on the child. The spirit that could enter my roof through that child, a child of, maybe it's a child of two, three years, nine, ten years, no. See, Am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. But please, brothers, marry though about to marry. Never over pamper children. Let them know discipline is part of love. Because most of our children will be born in millionaire families. You must discipline them. Don't let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society. Pray, they say, no, I, the church is hot. Please, daddy, can you give me the car to the jeep? No, son, you are sitting down here. If me, your father, the owner of the jeep, the jeep is sitting down, you must sit down and pray. Let's go back to our primary schools. I'm serious, I'm rounding up. Let's go back to our secondary schools. Gone are the days when teachers including Christian schools. I don't know what is Christian about the school if they don't pray. You have a Christian school and you openly said it's a Christian school and at the beginning of the class, they don't pray. What, what, is, what is the Christian about it? The teacher himself cannot pray. You never see a fasting program organized in the school. Nobody cares. While they are praying, the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again. Wait and let Koinonia start her schools. Oh yes, oh yes, let Koinonia start her schools. And you will see. There's nothing like I'm busy who will supervise it. It's a mandate. Don't do that I'm busy man of God and allow the devil kill your ministry. Sit down, open your eyes and see what is happening. This teacher's life is questionable. He's destroying the life of the student. Call him to the office. Sir, we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you, but we notice that um, it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children. Could there be a problem? Would you need some counsel? Nobody should talk to me. I'm doing all that nonsense. I tell him, as you finish this rubbish, collect your last salary with the cashier, go out of this place and never return. Any good PTA, they should clap for you as the director of that school. And say you are preserving standards. They laughed at Covenant University, laughed at Landmark University, laughed at Mountaintop University. But these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to Cambridge and Harvard because they kept God. Don't throw God and think it will go well with you. We'll continue next week. Six precepts. To keep and preserve God in a territory. 
which one have you missed would it be prayer warfare and intercession could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers you come to the house of God today you come after one month or you come to the house of God today you come when all your areas are paid only to come and testify have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere what is it still doing there when you come from that family apostle can you come and visit us try first try first don't get used to all this I, I love I love his testimony right pastor Lawrence I love his testimony it's not all about oh apostle prayed for me and I got a miracle no I came here apostle taught me I carried that understanding back home and I said daddy I know that for 35 years no door has opened in this family but I came all the way from Zaria with an anointing. I'm using the opportunity of this strike. Can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what God does. And in two days, something that did not happen in 30 years happens. You have revealed Christ to that environment. And finally, we must mentor the younger believers. But the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored. Because there are many proud, proud people, proud people. You touch somebody, he just falls down. And you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around. Colleague mentality. Some of you, you are in secondary school. Or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school. Thank God for what God is doing with them. And all of a sudden, this pompous, arrogant attitude. You see everybody and what is there. You see vision, I see vision. You pray for the sick, I pray for the sick. It's why we never receive. We keep making mistakes that are avoidable. Mistakes. Now let me tell you, mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing. Because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored. But they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing. And they taught them rubbish. They taught them pride. They taught them a pompous life. They taught them... A, theology of imbalance it matters who you listen to it matters who you open up your spirit to but that spirit must be open brothers and sisters our generation is at stake in the next 10 or 20 years many of the people we look at today will be gone is, is the truth do you believe that many of our fathers they are already wrapping up. We insulted them. We said, ah, they came and they taught people, cover your head, don't cover your head. We insulted them. They taught people, die, 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 die. We insulted them. Now the button is being passed to us. Let's hear what our children will say about us. We insulted them. We refused to see what God was doing through them. And as young as we are, we kept running our mouth insulting them. They preserve the button. Some of them today, look at great men like Papa Idia Deboya. People like Billy Graham still alive. These men serve God to the end. Let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency. That's the song, my very powerful song. That's the last song we'll sing this night. When it's all been said and done. There is just one thing that matters Did I live my life? I can't remember it again. Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done Listen All my treasures will be nothing The jeep and the duplex only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Am I against prosperity? No. But if that's all you can give a generation, 
if all you can give your child is secular education and a degree you have failed lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in merry clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've told me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone listen we are not going to be here forever no matter how you don't want to believe me nobody there is no man on earth who is 200 years old 200 years ago none of us on earth today was on earth live your life foolishly we owe our generation and our children a debt I will never except God takes my life but it will not be when I'm alive that I'll see darkness loom over the nations of the earth if it means my life going for it let it go but the ordinances of the kingdom must be preserved in our generation this is ministry if you are not ready for this don't jump around and talk nonsense a lady sent me a text today passionately she may be following listening and she said apostle she's from my village she said apostle come to my village why have you not come i said don't worry you think i won't come there i'm coming god is counting on you listen carefully i'm rounding up god is counting on you i'm not a man of god it doesn't matter there are souls if god planned that in pastor alpha's lifetime you are supposed to save 100 million people do you know if you save 20 million people the world will clap for you but it's when you get to heaven god will say you left 80 million people to go to hell because you did not manifest if god has anointed you to heal one million people and you documented hundred thousand testimonies they will register you in the christian hall of fame but when you get to heaven you hear nonsense our works will be tried by fire let's make business with god this wastage of time let us start with our jerusalem zaria let us start with nigeria you see what is happening in nigeria you know what most of us are doing what is happening in this nation those who are for a those who are for b but the preservers of the ordinances of god know that there are spirits they can read the writings on the wall that this is not an issue of north south east or west this is the devil eyeing a generation that wants to love god and the preservers of the truth say it doesn't matter where i come from lord it is your kingdom that must be established can we take a few minutes to pray tonight rise up on your feet There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who draws on Jesus. And let's pray over Zaria. Lord, we are preservers of the ordinances of God in Zaria. Let's start with our city. Let's start with our location. Revival. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shakata Bakoto Lord, we pray the glory of God across Zaria City, across Savo. Across prison, across Shika, 
in the name of Jesus your ordinances in this land is preserved preserved in our campuses preserved in every church preserved in every organization that calls upon the name of the Lord we decree and we declare it Hallelujah. There's an old revival song that was. How many of you know it? I, I pray you know it. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. You know that song? He's searching the earth. He's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of the nation. Those who will rise up and pray Who stand on the gap on behalf of our land Who stand in the gap on behalf of our land Down on our knees We'll take a stand And pray for the sea for our land Listen to the second part. It says, The power of darkness release our land. We'll never prevail. We'll never withstand the deep intercession by the people of passion. Those who will rise up and pray. Stand in the gap on behalf of the land. We stand in the gap on behalf of the land. Down on our knees, we take a stand and pray for the seed of our land. We'll pray for the needs of our land. Controlling powers over Zaria will curse you. Lift your voice and pray. We curse you from region to region. Shakatos Kaparia Kadas Kalepai. Embre Ketos Segeta. The powers that keep men poor. The powers that stop the gospel from prevailing in this land. The powers that stop development. The powers that stop advancement the powers that destroy men of God the powers that destroy churches the powers that destroy families we come against you by the blood we come against you by the blood as the church of the Lord Jesus we come against you we come against you Controlling powers over territories, spirits of violence, spirits of wickedness, yokes, burdens, spells, enchantments, divination, manipulations of the heavenly bodies. We come against you. In the name of Jesus, the body of Christ grows. Zaria grows. Whether Christians, whether Muslims, we advance in this city. We are the light of the world. In the name of Jesus, everyone is blessed in this city without prejudice because of the presence of the church. Hallelujah. I know our time is gone. But can we pray for Nigeria? We Listen. As God looks at the map. He's looking for incense. He has found it in other locations. Zaria must represent itself. In the realm of the spirit. Let God not see different localities. 
some villagers and God will see an uneducated woman intercessor and check Zaria and say Zaria where is your incense I like us to pray and say Nigeria is my business Nigeria is God's business peace to the walls peace to the borders Peace in the east, peace in the north, peace everywhere. We fortify the borders of this territory in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare. We manifest our priesthood. We are lampstands. We are lampstands. Priests unto God. We raise an incense of intercession over this nation. Nigeria is God's own nation. Nigeria amalgamated by the hand of God himself. We command from border to border the spirits of bloodshed. We curse you. We curse you. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Let's pray against the spirit of sentiment. Are we together? Whether Christian, whether Muslim, the truth is that we must live alone. And we must live together. Are we together? Whether whether Igbo, whether Yoruba, whether South South, whether Northerner, the truth of the matter is that there's nothing we can do about ourselves. We were brought by God. Let's cause the spirit of darkness. People have lost lives. several parts in Africa and they want to come to Nigeria is listen if you understand this thing it's not about north south east or west it is the devil looking for your destiny and looking for your children I like you to pray and command peace to the walls of this nation every state mention the states by name we command peace peace in Plateau State State. Peace in Lagos, peace in Kano, peace in Abuja, peace in Bauchi, peace in Kobe, peace in Adamawa, peace in Katsina, peace in Chikawa, peace in Imo State, peace in Enugu, peace in River State. We declare and declare the six short political zones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very quickly. Please let me wish you are from the east. Come and stand here. Sam, you are from the north. Stand here. We say you're about person that you become. Quickly. I want us to do something prophetic here very quickly. Anyone from the south south? I want the six geopolitical zones represented. South South. East. I don't know where I'm okay. You are we are, we are here together. There's there's one more poly, geopolitical zone. Northeast, who is from there? Northeast. One, two, three, four, five. Remaining one area. Where are you from? Northeast, not there's someone. This is south, south, southeast, northeast, 
North Central, Southwest. There's remaining one. Please, our time is gone. Northwest. Kaduna. Where else again? North Central. You can stand, Pastor Alpha. This is Nigeria. I'd like us to pray and prophesy that as the hands are joined in hands, any spirit trying to destroy us. The evil man will love the Yoruba man, the Hausa man, we love the South South man. We cause the spirit of hatred. We cause the spirit of hatred. We cause the spirit of hatred by this prophetic act. We declare Nigeria. Listen, God is not just a God of Christians, He's a God of everyone. We are praying for everybody in Zaria around. Let the Muslims prosper. Let Igbo people prosper. Let Yoruba prosper. Don't antagonize anybody. Lift your voice and say, Father, because of our presence, Nigeria must prosper. Lift your voice and pray. Take away any tribal sentiment. All we want is to see Jesus glorified in our nation. Jesus glorified in every home. Jesus glorified in every geopolitical zone. We declare that God and his purposes will not be lost in any territory. In the name of Jesus, regardless of the church, the ministry, and the individuals, may the purposes of Christ be preserved. Lord, we pray for Zaria, our Jerusalem. We declare that Jesus remains Lord. We declare that Christians, Muslims are all blessed in this nation. We decree and declare that everyone here in Saria is blessed because of the presence of God's people. And Father, we pray for our beloved nation. Our heroes gave their blood to see where we are today. We command every spirit that wants to plant enmity against one person and another we banish them from this nation in the name of Jesus as your priests we lift up our voice from this side of your kingdom and we declare that as far as this territory is concerned we remain one I decree and declare by this apostolic grace and under this platform, the church in Zaria remains one. There is no Igbo church. There is no Yoruba church. There is no Hausa church. There is only the church, the ecclesia, God's own place. In the name of Jesus, there will be no hatred and no violence within this border. Father, 
we commit our people here representing this nation prophetically let there be the spirit of love and unity every plan and purpose that is not of God to cause trouble to kill people to maim people to destroy lives and properties we banish it in the name of Jesus and Lord we thank you we ask for grace that our priesthood will be the reason why every territory we find ourselves will love you and live for you in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus celebrate Jesus thank you thank you so much hallelujah our time is gone but please listen it's a spiritual responsibility never move around because of what is happening around the nation and start antagonizing anybody are we together in koinonia and everywhere i have never never shown any tribal prejudice or any of these things no whether you are Igbo, yoruba hausa south south i've gone to all the geopolitical zones in this nation and they love me everywhere they have received me wholeheartedly nobody cared where i came from are we together we must propagate love and peace don't join ignorant people carrying all kinds of things. You turn and start hating evil people everywhere. Turn and start hating northerners everywhere. And pastors, let's be careful. The pulpit is not where we used to, to, to build hate. Are we together? No pastor, no man of God. There are many listening to me. No man of God should go and take their pulpit and tear down another locality. That's not what God asks us to do. We are to preach love, we are to preach peace, not even against Muslims. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. There are people, most of the people transporting you now after service, they are outside, they are hearing me. Most of them are Muslims. The Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers. We've had a very healthy relationship with them for years. There are many people who help to serve in various things in the ministry. They are not Christians. We love them. We pray for them. But we must treat them with love and honor. The head of the Nigerian Union Road Trans of Transport Worker, when, they, when his wife gave birth, the protocol department went to go and visit him in the hospital. You see them come for our dinner. Christians or Muslims, that's not our business. We invite them for dinner and we love them. This is how the kingdom advances. By the time we start bringing all these prejudices, when people act, it is because of spirits, not religion. It is because of spirits, not culture. We must be smart so that our lives will be advocates of truth this is why god anoints people this is ministry for such a time as this every man of god here you have a responsibility to sensitize your people to promote love are we together don't those of you who are on facebook don't go and join all these dull comments by people who don't know god post something and then you say it on behalf of koinonia it will be an indictment to both god and us I stand here on behalf of the ministry to, to present our position to the numerous people. We are people of love. We love God. We love government. We love state. We love everybody. Are we together? Our job and our assignment as given by God is to pray for the peace of this land and to contribute our quota to the building of the body of Christ and not to come in with all kinds of ethno-political and religious sentiments. No. Be a promoter of peace or just be silent and pray. If you have nothing to do online, don't go and begin to instigate violence and then say you are a Christian and attach the names of men of God, destroy their reputation online because of carelessness. We must be sensitive. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like, 
this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye